Late 1943, the Allied invasion of France is imminent. Trying to prevent its enemies from setting foot in France and thereby opening the long-awaited Second Front, the German High Command is sending all possible resources to the defense of the Atlantic Wall. In November 1943, Hitler decreed Directive No. 51, in which he gave priority to the Western Front, in view of the operations planned for 1944. This decree included the formation of new units of a power rarely seen before. Until now, as was the case with the Panzer Lehr Division. However, in addition to the Panzer Lehr, there were other divisions that had already begun to be formed in France, such as the Waffen-SS divisions Hitler Jugend, Frontsburg or Hohenstaufen. Furthermore, they were joined in October 1943 by the 17th Division of the Waffen-SS Gotts von Berlichingen, this unit being the one we will focus on below. The Berlichingen Division was formed in October 1943 in the vicinity of the French city of Plaudier. Unlike other SS divisions that were formed by volunteers, this new division was formed by conscripts. Among them were young men between 17 and 18 years old, along with older men who had been working in German industry or in some SS administrative position. They were joined by many ethnic Germans from countries occupied by the Third Reich, including Romanians, French, Czechoslovaks, and even some 500 Italians who volunteered to serve within the Waffen-SS. After approximately five months of hard training, by April 1944, the division was declared fit for combat and was located south of the Loire River, between the city of Tours and Poitiers. Commanding him was General Werner Ostendorf, who in his previous years had been linked to the Das Reich de Vin. At the time of the Allied attack on Normandy, on June 6, 1944, the Berlichingen Division had almost 20,000 troops on staff, although it only had 45 tank destroyers. On the other hand, it should be noted that the majority of its infantry battalions were motorized. A few hours after the Allied landing in Normandy, the Berlichingen Division was activated and received the order to head towards the Norman beaches at full speed. Approximately some 450 kilometers separated it from the beaches where the landing was taking place. After about three and a half days of marching, the first vanguard units of the Berlichingen Division began to arrive in the western sector of Normandy at the base of the Cotent in Peninsula, which had received the American attack. On this peninsula, crowned by the important port of Cherbourg, the Americans had launched their 82nd and 101st parachute divisions and also had the 4th, 9th, and 90th infantry divisions on the ground. By the time the vanguards of the Berlichingen Division arrived, the German forces in the sector were collapsing. In the center of the peninsula, the 9th Infantry Division pressed west to Severco Tenten. To the south, the 101st Airborne Division was attacking the city of Carrington to connect the UT sector with the Omaha sector. Due to the harassment by the Allied aviation that the German division began to suffer as soon as it crossed the war, its units had to be divided, and that is why they arrived in a fragmented way at the Normandy combat front. On June 11 and 12, the vanguard of the division was able to join the remains of the 6th German Parachute Regiment, which had been retreating from Carrington, and together with them, they began a strong counterattack. The German counterattack was not strong enough, and Carrington ended up falling definitively into American hands on June 13. During the following days, the fighting intensified even more after the arrival of the American 2nd Armored Division, which had more than 200 tanks. From here, the men of the Berlichingen Division had to focus on preventing the American forces from gaining ground to the south. In this way, while they remained on the defensive, they also awaited the arrival of the Das Reich Division that had begun its march from the south of France Dezo. It is estimated that when Das Reich arrived in Normandy at the end of June, the number of troops in the Berlichingen Division had been reduced to less than half, and it barely had 8,500 men and very few tank destroyers. During the month of July, 
men from the Berlickingen Division prevented the Americans from taking the town of saint Delo. However, as the days of July passed, the balance dipped more and more on the American side. Finally, on July 25, the Americans began a new major offensive in the sector, which was known as Operation Kohler. After completely devastating the territory in which the Panzer Lair was located, located on the right flank of the Berlickingen Division, both the Das Reich Division and Berlickingen began to be attacked from the north and east. By July 27, the risk of being surrounded began to increase, and they had to begin a retreat to the south while they were continually crushed by Allied aviation. Despite their efforts, part of the Berlickingen Division was eventually surrounded by the American 2nd Armored Division in the vicinity of the town of Ronsi. While many of the SS men were able to escape, they had to leave behind most of their heavy equipment along with the few armor they had left. Despite its weakness, the unit was forced to participate in Operation Lydic to try to close the gap opened by the Americans in the vicinity of Avranches. As we already signed the program dedicated to Operation Cobra, this action only served them to fall squarely into Falaise's back. At the end of August, and after suffering many losses, the few troops belonging to the Berlickingen Division managed to cross the Senna and retreat to the German border. In an attempt to reinforce it as quickly as possible, the Berlickingen Division absorbed two independent Waffen-SS brigades that had also been decimated in recent fighting, and in September it was sent to defend the bank of the Moselle between Luxembourg and Metz. Finally, the German unit prepared to defend the city of Metz, which was going to be attacked by Patton's Third Army. It was there that the unit played a very prominent role, preventing Patton from advancing around Metz during the last months of 1944. The capture of Metz was the worst operation that Patton led in the entire war. In mid-October, the remaining 800 men of the Berlickingen Division received permission from Hitler to abandon the front line and retreat to Germany to regroup. Just eight days later, Patton was finally able to take the city of Metz. With little time to rest, the 17th Division of the Waffen-SS was once again sent into combat east of Metz to prevent the Americans from entering Germany. It was there, in the Zoo region, that Berlickingen had to fight throughout the month of December, while further north, the Germans attacked in the Ardennes. Luckily for them, the pressure on Patton's Third Army eased when the attack on the Ardennes began. The brief pause was used to reinforce the unit, which at the end of December could count on some 6,000 troops and nearly 40 tank destroyers. However, it should be noted that the quality of the new replacements was far below that of the division's original elements. In an attempt to relieve the great pressure that the Allied armies were putting against the positions that the Germans had gained during the Ardennes offensive, the German High Command planned a new attack on the Western Front. This operation would be known as Operation Nordwind. The new attack would take place on December 31 and would be launched in the vicinity of the city of Strasbourg. Because the Berlickingen Division was to participate in the new operation, it was reinforced at full speed with a company of Panther tanks and a battalion of heavy tank destroyers. Despite their efforts, the German attack ended up stalling after a few days, and none of the set objectives could be achieved. On January 10, Division Commander Hans Lingner was captured by a patrol of the 44th Infantry Division when his car overturned on a slippery road. A few days later, the famous Fretz Klingenberg, at that time with the rank of Colonel, took command of the Division. Klingenberg had been linked to the Das Reich Division for almost the entire war and had been notable for taking Belgrade in April 1941 with barely a German patrol. The division then remained fighting in the sector surrounded by Strasbourg until mid-March 1945. On March 22, the unit had to mourn the death of its commander-in-chief, Colonel Fritz Klingenberg, who was killed in combat. At that time, the division was surrounded near the Felser Forest and had to begin a flight towards the Rhine. 
Only 600 men managed to reach the eastern bank of the Rhine after having abandoned all their vehicles and heavy material. After many efforts, by April 1, the division strength had once again reached almost 7,000 men. This allowed him to continue fighting on the Western Front, retreating little by little to the city of Nuremberg. There, his 38th Regiment was completely destroyed on April 20. Along with him, his commander, Vincent Kaiser, fell, who was executed by the Americans after being taken prisoner. The division's few remaining men then continued fighting as they retreated toward the Alps, attempting to slow the relentless American advance. Their last major confrontation took place on April 29 in Moosburg, north of the city of Munich. However, on May 5, just three days before the end of the war, some men from Berlichingen participated in the famous attack on Itter Castle in Tyrol in which they faced American troops and some men from the Wehrmacht who fought on the Allied side in this session. In that castle, many high-ranking French soldiers and politicians were prisoners, and the intention of the 150 men of the Berlichingen Division was to execute them before the war end. Among them were Paul Reno and Gamelin. Finally, the remaining men of the 17th Waffen-SS Division surrendered to the 101st Airborne Division north of Kufstein, just a few kilometers from Hitler's residence in the Alps, on May 6, 1945. So, what do you think of the history of this Waffen-SS Division? I leave you in the description the program in which we analyze the history of the three most powerful divisions that the Black Order could put on the battlefield.